Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Ageless Sisters, your global source for beauty and anti-aging, with your host, Cynthia Rowland, creator of Facial Magic and Luscious Lips. Well, good morning, everyone. It's Cynthia Rowland here in Long Beach, California, and I am so delighted that you are joining us. Today we have such a special guest from uh, across the world, and she is from New Zealand, and her name is Dr. Susan Maiava. Is that that's correct, nice. Susan? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> right. good, good morning, Cynthia. Good morning. We are so delighted to have you here. Now, before we start, I want to, everyone to know that as we begin this broadcast, I want you to think that you are a slim, beautiful, fabulous creation because Susan and her book called Fat Chance, the No Going Back Weight Loss Workbook, is going to help us realize our goal of slimness. And Susan, after looking at your book, I just have to say right off the bat, this is the best looking book I have seen in ages. Well, thank you, Cynthia. I, I appreciate that. I took a great deal of care to um, to design it uh, so that it would be um, a fun book to work with. It certainly is a fun book to work with because here's what I've discovered. And I used to be around the weight loss industry, so I kind of understand you know, the pros and cons of trying to reshape your body. But you make it fun and interesting. And when I was going through your book, I felt like you were just there holding my hand. And I think the readers who will get this book and pick it up, who wants, if they want to drop 5 pounds or 50 pounds, you're going to be there to help them every step of the way and give them all the pointers they need to be successful in their endeavor to lose weight. Well, thank you. Thank you. I did. I Because I was overweight myself once. And so... Um, when I when I I know I know that process I know what it is to be overweight. A, a lot of people um, books tend to lecture, uh, tell people what they should do. You know, do this, do that, do something else to lose weight. Um, but 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 people who are overweight, they know what they're supposed to do. They they know the theory. They just need help putting it into practice. And they I guess they need a friend, as you say, a friend to walk with them. Um, and to understand them, they don't need lecturing; they need understanding. And I, and I, when I was writing, that's what I was thinking of. And I, I, um, yeah, I, I, I hope that uh, the book has that level of empathy. That's what I was aiming for. And it does. I really think it does. And you know, every you just give such great um, information every single day, whether it's week seven, day three or week 11, day 7, there is something for every person to take away as they begin this pathway of thinking like a slim person. And you're pretty That's particular right. about that. I am, I am. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it starts with the, with the idea that it's not about dieting because, well, it starts with the idea of, okay, let's, Let's think about a slim person, uh, the slim person that we want to be, and slim slim people in general. Do they diet? No, they don't diet. How do they how do they maintain their slim weight? That was really my central question right back at the beginning. What is right. it that slim people do that overweight people don't do? And one of the things they don't do, uh, slim people, is they don't diet. So what do they do? And and I broke that. Um, down into you know how do slim people eat, how much do they eat, when do they eat, what do they eat, why do they eat? Those are four very important questions. Um, and working from that, I what I did was I, I worked out one of my first insights was the realization that slim people um, eat the number of calories they need to maintain their slim weight every day, so that if we did that, if we ate for our slim weight. Uh, then the weight would come down to our slim, our slim weight. So we have to 
be that slim person in our minds, in our behavior, before we are physically, before the, the body will follow. If we, if we think like a slim person, if we eat like a slim person, then our body will follow that over time. It's not quick. I don't promise, I don't promise a quick um, change. I, 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 what I promise is a, a long-term permanent lifestyle change. And, and that's exactly that what's will, needed. Yep, exactly. Well, I'm glad that you have been so particular in your thought process of putting this book together because I've had problems with my weight. I quit smoking after smoking for many, many years, and boy, did I balloon up. But I, mm-hmm. I, even though I hadn't read your book, I, I remembered what it was to be a slim person, and mm-hmm. finally I've begun, you know, after seven years or eight years now of not smoking cigarettes, I've been, I've really slimmed down my body. But you, no matter no matter what that your your client is or your person is or that girl next door or whatever, you tell them exactly how to change their thinking. Well, that whether it's it from using thinking. yes, it starts with the thinking, mm-hmm. and how to eat with a small plate and clean out your pantry and. You know, probably, and I haven't read every word, but you probably, you know, I know you have shopping suggestions and teaching your children. Where, how do you want to start to talk about the average person and how you can help them? Um, well, um, I think I think Cynthia, the, the the book is covers all those things. Now, it may seem to you that that's a bit of a jumble, but. Um, in fact, I constructed the book um, quite quite carefully so that it, it was both comprehensive and covered all the bases and well organized at the same time. So the book carries you. And now it's set out in, in um, it's got seven, it's a workbook. I'll start, I'll start with that. And the workbook is, aspect is, is really important. That's one of the things about the book that is so different from anything else on the market. Um, research has shown that Journaling really, really helps weight loss. Just the simple act of writing something down requires introspection. So the book requires the reader over 12 weeks, day by day, uh, to look inside themselves and to find the changes that they need to make. But that is organized for them. So I'm doing the organizing of the thinking, the providing of the information, and I'm asking the questions or the bookers. Um, in fact, in fact, the fat chance is, is its own narrator. I designed it so that it would be the friend um, that would go with the person. Um, but they are the ones that are looking deep inside themselves and, and asking, answering the questions and making the changes. So it's very much a partnership. Um, it's the seven days. I'll just run through those with you. Okay, um, you can do that. Okay, day one is thinking like a slim person, which we've been talking about. Day two is working with your body. Uh, So that is about putting you in touch with hunger. Uh, Remember I asked the question, uh, when do slim people eat? And slim people eat uh, when they are hungry. And so that's... and that begins the focus of, of day two, working with your body. Um, day three is establishing new habits. Habits mm-hmm. are such important things. And this is something that uh, men are like as well. Men are very much creatures of habit. So the, the book is um, written for men as much as it is for women. Um, day four is dealing with emotional hunger. Um, and I, I guess possibly women identify with this a bit more. Um, Although men men will admit men will admit that they have emotional hunger as well. Um, day five is very important because that has a focus on getting active and um, getting more exercise and using up your your calories that way. Uh, now day six again is um, enjoying a healthy balanced diet, and then day seven is very much a reflection day, so that you can see all those questions that I asked before, and this is this is what I I want your your readers to take home. There are these four questions: How much do slim people eat? Um, and that's in terms of calories. When do slim people eat? 
that they eat when they're hungry and they stop when they're full. What do they eat? They eat healthy foods that provide everything they need in their body so their body's not searching, their body doesn't have to search for food and they eat foods that reduce their hunger and delay their hunger. That's things like uh, protein in every meal, uh, low GI foods, lots of fruit and vegetables and fiber and so on. And then the wider slim people eat, and that's they eat for uh, for fuel. They don't eat for emotional reasons. So that's why we have a, a lot of emphasis, particularly on day four, dealing with emotional hunger, because slim people don't eat in response to emotional hunger. They deal with their emotion emotional needs um, more proactively, directly, without eating food. Now, I've given you a long, long explanation there. You can, you can ask me anything. Well, that's questions okay. If well, you, you want know, to okay. So, as, yes, and so here you are, leading this person. And I wanted to tell everybody, this is a hands-on workbook, so that yeah. you, the 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 gal or the guy who is wanting to make this change in your body, you are being asked by Susan to record your food, to. Uh, extra activities, what did I do right today, what went well today. You're asking them to journal in this workbook all of the things that really matter. Yes. Yes. That, that, now let's, right. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop there for a second, and I'm going to ask you a couple of other questions. You said early on that you had a weight challenge. Mm-hmm. How yes, long did. did you have a weight challenge? Uh, well, probably from when my – daughter was born, um, well I had it through my youth that really, a, bit, a wee bit, um, although when I look, the funny thing is when I look back at my photos I wasn't actually too bad, but in my mind I did, um, but from when my daughter was born until she was um, probably about eight years old I suppose, uh, my my weight really ballooned at that point. Um, yeah, and, and so I had that experience of, of, of being overweight myself. Um, and I guess I, I, in the end I, I got tired of the debilitating effect that, it, that being overweight had on my life. And I just came to the conclusion I didn't want to be like that for the rest of my life. Um, people who are overweight, they, they, they reach a tipping point where they just say, That's, I don't want to be like this any, anymore. Um, you, it's hugely embarrassing to tell the shop assistant that an XXL or extra extra large is too small. So you give up shopping for clothes. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's hugely embarrassing to walk with your slim friends trying to keep up with them and hide the fact that you're huffing and puffing to do it. So mm -hmm. you tend to drop out of activities and you become a participant in life and, and uh, sorry, an, an observer, I mean, in life instead of a participant. Um, but I also have to say one of the biggest issues for me personally was that I felt um, invisible in my career, uh, my professional career. And I think a lot of overweight people will know what I'm talking about there. Their opinions are not taken seriously uh, in in discussions, um, in their careers, in their jobs. They're, they're relegated as being... They're overlooked for promotion. They're considered less important. They're not taken seriously, and and it's difficult for a slim person to 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 believe that, but it's actually true. And people who are overweight will they'll know what I mean. Um, so, so I was really motivated at that at that point because I thought I could make a contribution. You see, and I and I, and I wanted to make that contribution. And I felt that my weight was one of the things that was preventing me from being able to do that. Well, it would prevent you because just your thinking is making that so, if nothing else. Oh yes, yes, now, yes, yes now. <laughs> yes, yeah. which is uh, which is um, uh, it's and confidence. It's really turned around my confidence being able to lose the weight. Yes. Well, mm. I can imagine. And then writing this very successful book. But everybody should know the name of it is called Fat Chance, the No Going Back Weight Loss Workbook. And you can get it on Amazon or you can go to fatchanceweightloss.com 
and see what Susan has to offer there because I believe there's a um, – is there a downloadable version too as well? The, um, on on the website, fatchanceweightloss.com, um, I have my online version. The book has been so successful in New Zealand that I've – recreated it in, in an online format as an online program um, and that you can you can buy that direct from the website there, there's a couple of links to go through it actually takes you to my New Zealand website but if you follow that you will find it and that is available globally uh, anyone can can do that program wherever they are in the world so that's that's really really good and that's the same content, the same material, but because it's very interactive, because it's like the workbook. The workbook itself is very interactive, as you can you can uh, see, Cynthia. So you yes. can imagine taking that and putting it online, and then it be it's even more interactive when it's online. So your 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 listeners may be interested in having a look there. Also, there of course you can you can download the introduction. The whole of the introduction is there on the website and you can read that and you can download that. There's a little bit there's bits of video there as well and lots of information. So it's all perfect. There. So that's fatchanceweightloss.com. Yes. Susan, how did you feel when you'd lost those first ten pounds? Ah, uh, well <laughs> um one of the things I really enjoyed was Becoming more active um, and mm -hmm. e and eating and enjoying the healthy food. To be honest, I, because I, because it was a lifestyle change, I enjoyed the whole of the lifestyle change. Um, I actually have a personal trainer now, and I go to a personal trainer three times a week. I and I love being outdoors. I um, do lots of outdoor activity, um, playing golf and and tennis and things like that um, and uh, walking I love walking outdoors now um, I feel so much more I feel so much more of a participant actually in my own life really it's, it's affected my whole life mm. that's wonderful so many people who are overweight just stop doing everything that would make them slim but from eating properly and especially yes. exercising. They just yes. look at exercise like it's not their best friend for some reason, and that's a mistake mm -hmm. in their thinking. That's a mistake in their thinking. So um, <clears throat> I use a lot of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, which some of your listeners will know what, what, what that is. It's about identifying your negative thinking and replacing it with positive thinking and it applies to eating and food but you're right it applies also to exercise so so there's a page the one day for example I, I i do focus on what you're you're thinking about exercise and a lot of people you know identifying what do you think about exercise do you think it's painful you can't be bothered it takes too much time identifying all these negative thoughts about it and replacing it with with positive thoughts um, how good it feels um, to be, you know, in the water if you're swimming, or how good it feels to be in the air, or how, how um, it when you're walking it puts you in touch with the community. How getting exercise uh, makes you actually saves you time because you get more strength and more stamina. Your health improves. So you've got all these positive things to say to yourself, and self-talk uh, is really a skill. One of the one of the main skills that um, I, I do include a lot of in the book where you have to practice this, you know, changing your inner dialogue about everything you do, your exercise, your eating, and your whole sort of attitude to the way you live your life. Mhm. Mm I like that because Good. so many people, sell, when they when they are performing self talk, it's so negative. And that person would, I mean, I've heard my own girlfriend say, oh, I am so stupid today. Well, she's a brilliant lawyer. She's not stupid ever. <laughs> but people talk like that to themselves, and it reflects on them in a very negative way, and they may mm. not even know it. Mm, exactly. I agree with you entirely. So I've, I give, I give um, lots of little you know, little uh, mantras, if you like, uh, little phrases or little questions that people can ask themselves, things they can say to themselves. Um, uh, for example, here, I deserve to be slim, fit, and healthy. Um, I'm building my self-esteem because I'm I matter. I'm worth it. Um, yes. 
and I'm meeting I'm meeting my emotional needs without food. So so for example, if someone has a situation where they where they go, oh, I've had a really bad day today. Um, you know, I deserve an ice cream or whatever. Mm. You can then immediately say no. I'm not. I'm going to say, I've had a bad day today, um, but but I deserve to treat myself well. Um, I'm going to meet my emotional needs without food. I'm going to go and um, have a have a nice, let's say, a warm bath with some candles or uh, buy a bunch of flowers or something. But but not I can food. Meet my, I can meet my emotional needs without food. There you go. Well, mm-hmm. okay, as we're the clock is already ticking down, I can hardly believe it, Susan. <laughs> I need to talk to you about these special little tips that you developed for the Ageless Sisters listeners. Can you run through those with me, please? Okay. So, the first one is is um to eat the number of calories you need to maintain your slim weight. Now, um that's quite a tricky thing just to, I'm just repeating that because for your listeners because we're we're not used to thinking that way it's it's a different way of thinking um what you can do is you can get, what I have on fatchanceweightloss.com actually is a calculator that will do that for you it will tell you um how much you should be eating if you put in your your uh your goal weight your height uh your age and so on, and just a few things like that. It will tell you how many calories you should be eating each day, forever, for the rest of your life, to maintain your slim weight. And yes. that's the level at which you should be eating it. Um, the second thing is to learn to recognize hunger and to only eat when you're hunger, hungry. So, so that's maybe to do that, you have to. Um, Try. You have to go. You have to be hungry. Some of us are not used to. Some of us need to avoid hunger, and we don't actually know what hunger is like. Yep. So, go without food for a wee while, so that you um, and learn what is hung. What is hunger for you? For me, it's a little. Just I get a little feeling in my tummy, um, and I go, okay, that's hunger. Now I know that my body wants to eat. So it's a matter of listening to your body. And when your body says, okay, now it's time to eat, then. With the next convenient opportunity, make sure you've got some healthy food ready in your pantry. You know that you're prepared for that, and then go ahead and eat, and stop when you're stop when you're no longer hungry. Um, and how long is that usually? Is that like 15 minutes of eating, 10 minutes of uh, eating? How, well, what does a slim uh, person a consider? Yeah, after a time. Now my next tip is to eat off a small plate, and this is really okay. important really important tip for me is to eat off a small plate like a, what we call a bread and butter plate and now I know okay. you read, your listeners are going to go whoa that's not much uh, and it's not much um, I will find that I'm personally uh, my hunger is satisfied by um, eating off a, off a just a small amount off a small plate and that will only really to be honest be about five minutes but I'm eating also now my next tip is to eat Learn to eat really slowly, and um, put your uh, have a have a have a glass of water, sip water, uh, put your utensils down between your mouthfuls, um, and just take the time as you're eating to enjoy and really savor your food. Um, enjoy the taste of it so that you're not chucking it down, you know, gulping mm-hmm. it down. Um, that also brings me to my next tip, which is to actually eat a wider range of food. We you see, I'm not talking about dieting, and you'll notice that I haven't talked at all about dieting. Since you haven't even said the word. No, I haven't even said the word. Because with diets, what we think of them as being restrictive. You can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't eat something else. Now, <clears throat> certainly I do say um, avoid sugar and don't you know, reduce your fat intake in particular. This will help you. And in, But one of my tips is actually eat a wider range of of healthy foods, learn to enjoy those healthy foods, a wide range, particularly fruit, fruit and vegetables. Extend what you eat. If you don't normally get mushrooms, well, eat mushrooms, asparagus, um, beets, um, I don't know, uh, different fruits. Extend the range, experiment. Um, and the, the logic behind there is, A, you'll enjoy it more, and do enjoy it. Try cooking them different ways and so on. But 
the more you extend the range of foods that you eat, the more your body will be satisfied um, and you'll actually eat less. It'll be satisfied because you'll be getting all the minerals and the nutrients and the fiber and the um, all the goodness that you need and your body won't have to search for it. And oh, the, other thing are... I would... Go ahead. <laughs> the other thing I would say is, and this is probably my final tip, is... Protein in every meal. I, for me, that's very important. You're eating, you're eating more fruit and vegetables, high fiber foods, low GI foods. But I also find that, and I recommend that you include protein in every meal, including breakfast, um, which could be an egg or something like that. Um, and protein in every meal really also helps you manage your hunger and reduce the hunger. So that's an important component of of the Fat Chance Weight Loss Workbook as well. Is Using your food intake to manage your hunger. So, using your yep. food intake to manage your hunger, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, do you recommend getting your protein from, like, leafy vegetables, or should it be an animal protein? Um, it, I would go for animal protein, but um, and, and I have to say the book is not specifically designed for vegetarians. There are vegetarian options. There are, mm-hmm. you can get... Your protein from legumes in particular, peas and beans and tofu and and uh, dairy products as well. Um, I would say your dairy products should be low fat, but dairy yeah. products certainly have the protein. So it doesn't really matter. Um, it, you know, as I say, eggs are good. Um, so, yep, whatever the source, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Now, when you look in the mirror, Susan, because you've been doing this for a while, obviously, pulling this weight down and developing this fabulous book for all of us to enjoy, when you look in the mirror, are you satisfied? Do you feel better <laughs> about yourself? I, I, I do. I, I, I am. Um, yes. Now, I'm, I'm in my fifties. I won't, I won't, I won't go. You're just a baby there. girl. Fifties, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So um, I've, you know, the other thing too is there has to be a level of acceptance there as well. Uh, I'm not aiming to be super slim, super skinny. Um, I'm aiming to be at a healthy weight where I can be active, where I, my body um, is healthy, my body is fit, my body will do what I require of it, what I need of it to live my best life if you like, yes. to be able to yes. participate in life. And that's my goal. My goal really is not, um, you will, I'm not saying you won't, you will lose weight uh, with, with fat chance. You will lose, pull the weight off. But that's not the end goal necessarily. The end goal is to, um, is to equip your body, your body is your vessel that you can go and live your best life. There you go. So, yeah. And, you know, one thing that we all kind of, I'm not all of us, but I know that I wish I could have my slim teenage body back. It probably will never happen. But nevertheless, as long as we love ourselves and we create an inner dialogue that shows yeah. love and acceptance of ourselves, I think Absolutely. we are miles ahead. Absolutely. I agree with you entirely. Yes. yes. Oh, good. Now, remember, everybody on the call, that Amazon.com has this fabulous book called Fat Chance, the No Going Back Weight Loss Workbook. And if you don't get it there, you've got to go to FatChanceWeightLoss.com. That's FatChanceWeightLoss.com. And Look what Susan has to offer. Susan, we are out of time. This has been a great interview. I've just loved every moment of it. And I thank you so much for joining us from New Zealand, of all places. This is a worldwide show because we want everyone to feel that they are an ageless sister. So next time on the show, we have Dr. Richard London. He will be our guest. And, Susan, I just want to thank you again and again for sending me this great book. I loved going through it, and I know our listeners will really enjoy uh, reading it and going through it and using the workbook to help them lose those few pounds that they want to lose and feel confident and better about themselves. So thank thank you so much. We are off the air, girl. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.
You've been listening to the Ageless Sisters. Tune in again next time for the most up-to-date beauty and anti-aging secrets, tips, and shortcuts. Tips and shortcuts. Tips and shortcuts.